Welcome to LTV's Israel Daily. I'm Amit Harari. And coming up in today's newscast, another major arrest dealing a near critical blow to Palestinian terror groups in Janine. Meanwhile, Prime Minister designate Benjamin Netanyahu not speaking to Israeli media, but having a lot to say to the media abroad. And finally, are you in need for weed? Police uncovering a surprise network of Israeli doctors dealing in medical cannabis licenses. senior terrorist with the Palestinian Islamic Jihad group reportedly arrested overnight in a daring idea of parade in Janine and with that several of the Islamic Jihad's top commanders removed from the conversation. But that's not all and ILTV's Aaron Porris is reporting. Yet another major blow dealt overnight to the violent Palestinian Islamic Jihad terror group, this time with the arrest of Yihya al-Sadi amidst armed clashes in Janine and this as part of the ongoing anti-terror campaign dubbed Operation Breaking the Wave. Now, Yihya al-Sadi is a senior member of the terror group in his own right, and he's also the son of senior Islamic Jihad official Basem al-Sadi, whose arrest by Israel in August sparked heavy threats from the terror group's arm in Gaza, the group launching some 1,000 rockets at Israeli civilians over the course of a few days, and Israel responding with targeted airstrikes in the Strip, entitled Operation Breaking Dawn. Further, the arrest of Yichia coming just a day after another rocket fired from Gaza into Israel, and a few days after commander in the Islamic Jihad's Janine Brigade, Mohammed al-Sadi, was killed in armed clashes with the IDF in the city. Meantime, Operation Breaking the Wave also continuing elsewhere in Judea and Samaria, with one Palestinian militant killed, six others injured, and 14 arrested. All in all, serious damage is done in the past few months against the Islamic Jihad terror organization and Operation Breaking the Wave reportedly preventing some 450 significant terror attacks this year. שפועל אך ורק על פי חוק. זה סוד כוחנו, זה מה שיצר את עוצמתו של צה"ל. פרזידנט יצחק הרצוג טודי קומפלינג אס טו דיי גולף ויזיט לבחריין אנד דה יו-אי-אי. הרצוג אס רסיבינג אוורם וולקאם אין דה גולף סטייט וויץ אסטאבלישט דיפלומטיק רליישנס וויד אזרל אין דה 2020 אברהם אקורדס. אלטי וי סטיב לייבוביץ' רפורטס. פרזידנט הרצוג ארייב טו אוורם וולקאם אט דה רויאל פאליס פריז מיטינג וויד קינג חמד חליפה. Herzog was treated to what was certainly the first official playing of Israel's national anthem, Hatikva, in the Gulf state. Herzog opened his remarks in Arabic, thanking King Hamad for his hospitality. In response, the king stressed what he called Palestinian rights, but did not say Palestinian state, nor did he mention Iran, which is enemy to both Israel and Bahrain. <laughs> متمنين لكم إقامة سعيدة شكرا بخامة الرئيس شكرا جلالة الملك صديقي جلالة الملك أشكرك على استثفادي في المملكة البحرين المؤكرة كأول رئيس دولة إسرائيل يزور مملكة البحرين You are at the forefront of making history in the region where Jew and Muslim can dwell together as sons of Abraham, and move forward in peace. Later, Herzog met the Bahraini foreign minister. It's a huge pleasure to be here amongst friends and cousins, as you said so correctly. I think what we're doing today is another step, historic step, towards uh, upgrading the relationship and bringing uh, friendship and, uh, and partnerships in so many fields. Uh, I'm sure that this visit will enhance greatly the cooperation uh, that we have between our nations for the benefit of our peoples and the entire region. So thank you, Shukran Jazeelan. Thank you. This was the first time in Bahrain for the Israeli president and much emphasis was spent on developing business ties. The Israeli delegation, including entrepreneurs, including Startup Nation CEO Avi Sasson. From Bahrain, Herzog and the Israeli delegation continue on to the United Arab Emirates where Herzog is set to meet ruler Zayed 
Al Nakhian. Returning now to Israeli politics, the latest agreements between Bibi and his coalition partners finally published, and as expected, there will likely be some major changes to get used to. ILTV's Aaron Porras with the details. The final details of the coalition agreement between Prime Minister designate Benjamin Netanyahu and religious Zionism chief Petzalev Smotrich now published. And as the incoming Minister of Finance, Smotrich and his party already planning to exercise newfound authorities over the police, religious education, and even over military administration in Judea and Samaria. According to the deal, the government will now wield nearly full control over appointing the heads of the civil administration and COGAT, or the government and military liaison to the Palestinians in the West Bank. Additionally, a religious Zionism party MK will serve as junior minister in the defense ministry. So aside from keeping promises, including issuing food vouchers for the needy, raising funding for the police, and increasing grants for Jewish religious seminary or yeshiva students, it's assumed that Smotrich and his party will likely back expansions over the Green Line, while increasing enforcement against illegal Palestinian construction in areas under Israeli civil control, namely Area C in Judea and Samaria. Critics, meanwhile, panning the decision to place any military affair under the auspices of civilian authorities, arguing it would constitute a de facto annexation. Additionally, fears rising that the reforms could politicize the already tense positions maintained by Kogat. As of now, Kogat oversees all aspects of life where Palestinians in Judea, Samaria, and Gaza intersect with Israelis, including granting entry permits for work, transferring aid and goods, and even city planning and construction. In spite of seemingly growing concerns, Prime Minister-designate Benjamin Netanyahu saying that his incoming government will be committed to protecting democratic rights. Netanyahu also telling NBC's Meet the Press that people should not be surprised that he'll avoid conflict and work for expanded peace. Interviewed by Chuck Todd from Meet the Press, Netanyahu rejecting the interviewer's characterization of his right-wing coalition partners as extremists and insisted that his government will follow prudent policies. Well, I've had these doomsayers saying the end of uh, democracy. Well, they said before that, you know, they, for 30 years they characterized me as a warmonger and there'll never be peace with Netanyahu. Okay, number one, there were fewer wars <laughs> than at any other time, fewer casualties, the safest decades in our history because I'm a bereaved brother, I lost my brother, I saw my parents, right. and human life is important for me, period, in the life of our soldiers. And by the way, everybody in Israel, left and right, agrees with that. Probably one of the reasons I was re-elected. Netanyahu insisting that he will endeavor to keep Israel out of the needless conflict while trying to expand the historic Abraham Accords. I don't go into unnecessary military adventures. Secondly, I brought four historic peace treaties in ways that defied everybody else's prognostications. I'm going to safeguard Israeli democracy. I'm going to bring peace uh, categorically. I think I can get another breakthrough for peace, and I'm going to okay. stop Iran. That's what I'm coming back for, and that's what I'm committed to. The Prime Minister designated likewise firm in commitments to protecting Israel's vibrant LGBT community. On the LGBT questions, I'm, I just won't accept any of that. I mean, it's not something I'm saying now. I have a record, and I have a record in general, of, uh, of having two hands on the wheel. Meantime, Netanyahu seeming to indicate opposition to a change in the law of return, as suggested by critics. Are you going to change the law of return? Or is one Jewish grandparent no. going to be enough to become an Israeli citizen? It's going to be a big debate, but uh, I have pretty firm views. I doubt we'll have any changes. And that's something that's going to require real careful deliberation, and you don't, you don't just come off and, and do these things. In the midst of coalition talks, Netanyahu is avoiding interviews with the Israeli media. Only in English is he currently offering a glimpse to his incoming government. With me now to discuss the latest coalition appointments and Netanyahu's international campaigning, former Israeli diplomat to the United States, Yoram Ettinger, and founder and president of the Jerusalem Washington Center, Gideon Israel. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. Gideon. Yoram, so I'd like to start with you. Uh, so between Benville's national security portfolio and Smotrich expanded finance ministry, it seems that defense uh, and administration, especially in Judea and Samaria, is being seriously fragmented. How will this affect the government's ability to operate efficiently? Well, uh, so far, uh, the government uh, has not operated effectively uh, with the civil administration in Judea and Samaria. And the fact is 
that uh, this has become a point of controversy in uh, Israel uh, with the civil administration uh, basing its own approach to Palestinians in the area on uh, don't rock the boat. And don't rock the boat uh, does not advance the interests of, uh, of Israel. And in the process, it has undermined the interest of uh, Jewish communities in Judea and uh, Samaria, and in fact, um, has uh, played or has generated a major tailwind to the Palestinian Authority, which has become, which has been a very effective production line of uh, Palestinian Arab terrorists in the area. Now, get on, on that. There are fears that Israel will de facto annex part of the West Bank or at least change administrational policy. How do you see Washington reacting? Well, first of all, this um, is a right-wing government, and it was elected to implement uh, right-wing policies. So there are expected to be uh, some changes in Judea and Samaria, but the changes are mostly expected to be in Area C. And Area C is defined as Israeli territory, civilian control, and military control. What you've had over the past 20 to 30 years is that the, the, the Arabs in the West Bank of Judea and Samaria, the Palestinians, have been making continuous land grabs from that territory and essentially taking land that is Jewish land and basically stealing it. So what this government is trying to do is to implement what was supposed to be the policy for the past 30 years of Area C being totally Jewish area. Now, in terms of Area A, which is um, Palestinian military and civilian control, and Area B, there aren't expected to be any changes. So I don't think this government and this right-wing government is doing anything radical. And I think um, it will be important for the government to explain to Washington and to Israel's allies across the world that what they're doing is really implementing the Oslo Accords, which are now have expired anyway. So I don't think anything too radical is going on. Yes, and now, Yoram, speaking of Washington concerns, Netanyahu interviewing on American media and addressing fears regarding his government's policy on LGBT rights, on Trump's meeting with anti-Semites, the Palestinians. What is he trying to achieve here? And is it working? Well, uh, one has to expect uh, added pressure uh, by the administration on the Israeli government, uh, which uh, is natural, uh, coming from an administration which uh, is eager and displays its eagerness to achieve an accord with the regime of the Ayatollahs, an administration which has stated and restated its opposition to the military option and the regime change uh, option, uh, thus according major, major advantage to the Ayatollahs of Iran. And certainly pressure is expected from an administration which uh, is determined to redivide Jerusalem and to push Israel away from the mountain ridges of Judea and Samaria. Uh, this type of pressure has been a fixed uh, uh, feature of U.S.-Israel relations since 1948, but for the four years of President Trump, who was the only American president refraining from any pressure on uh, Israel. But uh, we have seen worse pressure. This is not the first pressure, not the worst pressure, and not the last uh, pressure. And hopefully, the Israeli administration will learn from precedents, where Israeli prime ministers from Ben-Gurion through uh, Shamir uh, withstood much, much tougher uh, pressure. Uh, and the main thing to remember is that uh, U.S.-Israel relations uh, are not uh, one-way street. Uh, U.S.-Israel relations have become, in recent years, a very, very mutually beneficial two-way uh, street. And Israel does not have to bow down to American pressure. 
All right, well, very interesting. Uh, Guy Donyol, we'll be right back with you for more on the latest in Israeli politics. But uh, first, uh, the Biden administration is taking a wait-and-see attitude towards the incoming Israeli government, and that's the word from U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, who was also uh, told the left-wing American Jewish group J Street that the U.S. fully respects the democratic choice of the Israeli people. More from ILTV's Steve Leibovich. Speaking to the Israeli-invested, left-leaning audience, the U.S. Secretary of State made clear that the Biden administration remains fully committed to a two-state solution. We know that at this moment, the prospects of a two-state solution feel remote. And that may be an understatement to some. But we are committed to preserving a horizon of hope. That means holding firm to the values that have anchored the friendship between the United States and Israel across countless transitions in government in both of our countries. Israel recently held free and fair elections with robust participation. And a new government is expected to take office in the coming days. We fully respect the democratic choice of the Israeli people. We again congratulate Bibi Netanyahu. Blinken was firm in the U.S. continued support for a nuclear deal with Iran that is strongly opposed by Prime Minister-designate Netanyahu. In short, the JCPOA was working. And that's not just our view. That's the judgment of international inspectors, independent international inspectors, as well as the State Department at the time. After the last administration withdrew and embarked on its so-called maximum pressure campaign, Iran stopped complying with many of the agreement's critical constraints and expanded and accelerated its enrichment activities. So much so that, by now, the breakout time has been shortened to just a few weeks. Some in attendance have been sharply critical of Israel, even suggesting a boycott. Blinken made clear that the U.S. is strongly opposed to BDS. Integrating Israel also means continuing to fight for Israel to be treated the same way as every other nation. No more, no less. While we fully respect the right of all to freedom of expression, and actively defend and promote this around the world, we continue to reject the global boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement for unfairly singling out Israel. Blinken's overall tone, there will be differences between the U.S. and Israel, but they will be differences between friends. And now returning to our panelists, Gidon Israel and Yoram Ettinger. Gidon, uh, for you, it seems the Biden administration is taking a more politically conservative, conservative tone with the incoming Israeli government, but What's the subtext? I mean, what are officials like Blinken not saying? Because it's clear they're not saying certain things. Well, I think it. I think it remains. I think it remains to be seen. Um, I think. Uh, I think the fact that um, Blinken was the uh, main speaker at a at a J at a J Street conference already already signals uh, signals where the administration is going, and um, and I think that the administration, whether it be because of them being worried or whether because of people getting them worried about certain certain um, parts of the government, parts of the new Israeli government, I think uh, I think what I think it remains to be seen exactly the climate that they will be creating, but it certainly won't be uh, the climate that was under the last administration. Now, I'm interested in hearing both of your takes on this. Netanyahu is certainly the longest-serving uh, prime minister in Israel, with many successes under his belt, including the Abraham Accords, fighting against Iran, and major economic free market development. But when Blinken congratulated Bibi on winning the election, there was clearly an audible hiss in the crowd. What are the main reasons that some American Jewish groups seem to have turned on him um, and still do not really like him? Gidon, you start. <laughs> Well, I think well, I think a lot of um, first of all, the, the the Democratic Party isn't what it was when uh, when Netanyahu um, began his second stint as prime minister in two thousand and nine. It's uh, shifted very very far to to the left, and I think the reason I think the reason that most Jewish groups are worried about this about Netanyahu forming another government is I think that they receive a lot of um, disinformation about about what Netanyahu plans to do and what the government will be doing. And it's very unfortunate. And I think that once they get the information, the, the real information about what the government is planning to do, the policies they're planning to implement, it's not uh, nearly as bad as they uh, perceive. 
Joram, how do you see this? Well, it seems to me that uh, Blinken's uh, presentation, uh, the reaction, uh, highlights one of the key challenges of uh, the Netanyahu government in general, Netanyahu himself personally, and this is to educate, literally educate the secretary, educate Jewish leaders, educate major administration officials on the benefits to the U.S. from Israel's own control of uh, the mountain ridges of Judea and Samaria, aspiring for a Palestinian state would establish a Palestinian state west of the river, which would doom the pro-American Hashemite regime east of the river, which was then, which would then trigger ripple effects into the Arabian Peninsula, a, a threatening to topple every single oil-producing pro-American Arab regime, be it Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, which is a major reason for Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and Bahrain to come to terms with uh, Israel. They don't do that because they love uh, the Jewish state or because they are convinced that the Jewish state wishes peace. They do that because they are very much aware that Israel on the mountain ridges of Judea and Samaria constitutes a major, major power of deterrence in face of Iran's ayatollahs, in face of the Muslim Brotherhood terrorists, in face of any Islamic or Arab terrorism and Palestinian terrorism is part of that rogue Middle East elements which threaten pro-American Arabs. And it's time, I think, for Secretary Blinken to realize that while he offers Palestinian leaders red carpet treatment in Washington, Arab leaders offers Palestinian leaders at best a very shabby doormat reception in their own capital. And the question is, what do they know about the Palestinians that Blinken is yet to learn? Yoram Ettinger and Gidon Israel, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Now, are you looking to score some weed? Well, no problem, believe it or not, because a team of Israeli doctors have reportedly been selling medical licenses and not just for the needy. Two senior doctors, along with other suspects, being arrested this morning on suspicion of providing licenses for the use of medical cannabis and not necessarily only to patients in need. The scope of the offenses of their so-called industry being estimated at a value of 17 million shekels. בחקירה הסמויה נחשפה רשת רופאים ומתווכים אשר פועלים להנפיק את הרישיונות שלא כדין תמורת אלפי שקלים לכל רישיון. The doctors are suspected of receiving bribes in exchange for issuing the cannabis licenses through online channels, including Telegram. In the past year, the National Cyber Unit conducting an undercover investigation concluding that some of the suspects advertised online, a service for the sale of medical cannabis licenses reaching their customers within the same day, paying thousands of shekels. This with the police emphasizing that the license sent to the customers was assumed to be an authentic license, signed by doctors authorized to approve it on behalf of the Medical Cannabis Unit at the Ministry of Health. שיטת הביצוע הינה שהלקוחות פונים לחשודים דרך ערוצי טלגרם יהודיים או דרך אתר חברה מעורבת ובתמורה לתשלום של אלפי שקלים לכל רישיון הלקוחות מקבלים המצאה והדרכה של סיפור כיסוי שהומצא במיוחד עבורם ובנוסף הלקוחות מקבלים חיבור לרופאים אחד מומחה אשר ממליץ על קבלת רישיון לצריכת קנאביס רפואי ורופא נוסף שמאשר את ההמלצה לאחר מתן האישור מתקבל הרישיון שאיתו צורכים הלקוחות את הקנאביס בכל בית מרקחת מאושר. The investigation also emerging that in several cases drug dealers used the certificates received from the suspected doctors to trade in cannabis. Now let's take a look at the weather forecast. Tonight you can expect partly cloudy skies and cooler temperatures with an average low of about 10 degrees Celsius or 50 Fahrenheit. And then tomorrow seeing a mix of cloudy skies and scattered showers along with average highs expected to reach 20 degrees Celsius or 69 Fahrenheit. And that's all for today's news. For more updates from Israel on all your devices, check out our LTV channels on YouTube, Facebook and Telegram and subscribe to our LTV newsletter. I'm Amit Harari. Be well and thank you so much for watching.